Okay, to, clo to close up today and, and give a little bit of a, a bit of a summary of uh, what we've heard, could I invite uh, our two co-chairs, Fran Sullivan and Simon Bridges, up to the stage? I'll just put a couple of questions to them. I was just saying, David Downs would do a good uh, John Oliver, Stephen Joyce impression as well. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so we're going to keep this really brief. So I'm going to ask you each to give us your one top takeaway from today. That's going to be really challenging. Who would like to go first? Oh, look, I, th I think this, the relationship is, and I don't want to say surprisingly good shape because that sounds bad, but um, surprisingly good shape. Um, you, you take what Miles Hurrell said, for example, that you know if you go back 15 years ago, when the China relationship in a trade sense within the ascendancy is a question, you know, would the, U the US uh, relationship fall away? Actually, uh, mm. it's at 25 some billion uh, dollars, and, uh, and and the desire. This is the second one, but I'll just fit it in really quick. The desire from both sides, whether it's Ambassador Dow, whether it's you know, the, the, the ministers that we heard from or, or, or business people is to go even further. So I think it's incredibly positive. Well, I mean, to me, it was just so wonderful to see a bunch of new ministers, including the Prime Minister, wanting to grab the opportunity. I felt if they can keep going out of the gates the way they did and the passion and the momentum they showed today, uh, it's going to be good for New Zealand. Great. I was going to ask whether you're more or less optimistic about the relationship after today, but I think we know what the answer to that optimistic. will be. So perhaps um, what are you most optimistic about in the coming 12 months? Uh, around the US relationship? Um, look, I think that um, although it's a shark tank, um, we're going to see new rocket labs and halters, and um, that there's going to be a trade mission. I'm going to be on it. I'm going to go to Denver, and I'm going to drink that craft beer. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Uh, I'm quite happy to join the little sharks on the mission. <laughs> Look, I, I, um, I, I thought it was great, and I, I really liked the way the government uh, officials are crafting around policy, thinking about technology, thinking about space. Um, the metrics that were put up by John Ballinger today showed incredible ingenuity and persistence by New Zealand, despite not having the FTA, which um, the Foreign Minister reminded us uh, we've been chasing since 1939, which was something I didn't know about before. But I, I'm actually very optimistic, and mm. I think if we get good leadership and, and we can mine these opportunities, um, it's pretty inspiring, frankly. Mm. And the final thing I want to ask, um, we've, we've lost two great... Um, uh, United States uh, ambassadors, really, um, uh, over the last week. So Warren Buffett lost his right-hand man this week, Charlie Munger. Uh, and, of course, Henry Kissinger, I'm sure most people in the room have seen now, former U.S. Secretary of State, died today, aged 100. Uh, I wonder if you could offer some reflections on what their legacy uh, has been. Yeah, well, I think in terms of Kissinger, I mean, obviously he was uh, the exponent of real politic and uh, had an outstretched influence in, on, on geopolitics, really, and, and, and that, that doctrine. I think, you know, more recently, what I find amazing, and, you know, we, the panel I was on, we were looking for personal inspiration. Here is a gentleman who lived a very full life. He lived to be 100. He wrote a book after he turned 100. In fact, I've got another book of his that I don't think he quite wrote when he was 100, but certainly in his late 90s on AI with a couple of others. It's been a very influential book in that area. So, um, yeah, a remarkable life uh, and, and very inspiring, really, personally. I was saying to Brett O'Reilly, um, you know, if, if I made it to 90-some, I'd be pretty impressed with myself. But 100 <laughs> of the life he's lived, that's not bad going. And he was in China earlier this year, right, visiting uh, President Xi Jinping? Friend. Oh, well, I, I was just an ab absolute um, fan for Charlie, I must say. I did go to one of the... Berkshire Hathaway meetings years ago, like a long time ago. Uh, perfect foil uh, for Warren Buffett, but um, he was really interesting because he's a guy who took the long view on China, for instance, and um, saw with China uh, that it would continue to grow despite the American uh, view at the stage. Um, he was an internationalist. They invested in BYD. Um, he would be quite, um, you know, kind of positive about that investment in China. Uh, Sorry, did I say whatever? <laughs> and be widey, and uh, more so than Tesla. So I think, and it was interesting because he, he had so many aphorisms and, you know, things that stuck out were 
comments around um, academia and, um, you know, forget all that, just take the big idea from where you can get it. And taking the long view on value, um, don't trade, you know, take the long view, buy in very good companies with sane people that run them. Mm -hmm. All right, well, um, Simon, Fran, thank you so much for thank being you. our co-chairs for today and for all the effort you've put in. I know it's been uh, a big challenge putting this together with particularly the, the formation of the government and the, the challenges that that has brought with yeah. it. So thank you both yeah. very much. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Thank you.